trailer they showed them fighting each other and i'm thinking what what beef could they possibly have with each other i thought they were friends yeah no kidding i'm not sure <laughs> so no oh, who knows me there's do we need to kind of build up excitement for arrow <laughs> i have no idea but uh yeah so speaking of flash uh the flash episode uh, was pretty decent and uh i i was uh really liking uh cisco i like i really like his character and uh, because obviously he meets this, runs into this new uh, metahuman, and it's like a guy who was a bully in high school uh, and bullied him around, and uh, he can turn himself into like a metal alloy uh, somehow. And uh, just the whole deal when uh, they were uh, obviously they were they were fighting. Meaning, of course, he broke I don't know how many bones, and he had to recover. And then uh, they started talking about was well, there's got to be some way we can take him down. Then Cisco's will says, "Yeah, you have to be going. Uh, you know, uh, was it? I'm not sure what the speed was, but eight hundred something uh, miles an hour. And apparently, that's a, that's the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, said, but you also, you also have to be like five point three miles away in order to hit him and and knock him down. And uh, obviously, there was a lot of tension building up that because you no, know, he you know when there's a confrontation because he's got Iris with him and." And because uh, he's interested in Iris, the, the bad guy that, that is. And, uh, you know, he's like, uh, you're a bully, you've always been a bully, blah, blah, blah. And he gets hit and knocked down. And then, uh, you know, there's the flashback of uh, him and uh, uh, the father, Brett. Oh, Joe? Joe, thank you. Of him and Joe saying, you know, sometimes it's it's not a bad thing to kind of uh, turn and run. And then he runs away. And then, of course, no, they're, they're back to the left. Like, what is he doing? <gasps> He's gonna do it, you know. Cisco's like so excited, and then like he's going, he's like he's just watching him. He's like, "Yeah, he got a supersonic boom punch, baby!" Like so excited that he did it. <laughs> so like, like yeah. I am really liking Cisco's character now. I mean that that's that's a good dynamic for for Flash for sure. And uh, of course, all of a sudden now, uh, Iris has got uh, the show like in the end when she's doing her last blog, and all of a sudden she got like like thousands and thousands of followers because now she's kind of coined the name the Flash. Because if you remember correct, I remember in the show it was like, well, he's gonna say, well, don't don't call him the streak or don't call me the streak. I can't remember whether he's talking to her as a Flash or Barry, but and then she's like, well, how about the Flash? Well, there's a thing. Then all of a sudden, Flash. And there you go. There's a name. <laughs> Bam! Yeah, I like the way they worked that in there. It was pretty cool. It was uh, it was very neat. It felt very natural as opposed to someone just branding themselves the Flash. Well, exactly. And but the thing is, uh, the the kind of the twister here in this one. Was obviously Joe was trying to uh, go back through old notes and reopen the file to get uh, Barry's dad out of jail. All of a sudden, that thing that killed Barry's uh, mother came in and took everything away and said, "You know, like uh, back off, or else he's going to kill Iris." Yes, oh, that was quite the cliffhanger. I felt so bad for Joe. He's such a nice guy, so. and Jesse L. Martin is so amazing in that role. It, he. I, for me, he kind of stands out as opposed to everyone else's performance. There's something a lot more, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say about just genuine. He just seems like a real guy. So right. I just, my heart went out to him about, about having Iris threatened. And, uh, well, yeah, so there, there was that. And so it's still, you know, still not sure, even though, you know, the doctor said, well, no, I left because my uh, wife partner died in a car crash. And then it came here to start things over. Nobody knew who I was, and sort of thing. So, you no, know, the 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 was the the accelerator wasn't even like a glint in his eye at that time, or or there wasn't enough work to make that happen. So he's trying to figure out how this uh, other guy came about. But I still don't completely trust him. Mm -hmm. So I kind of still think he is uh, uh, not. Uh, I think he is. Would he be Zoom or would that be Eddie? Um. I thought Eddie was gonna be a reverse flash. Reverse flash, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So it, uh, he'd probably be Zoom, if anything. I definitely don't trust Harrison. I kind of, I kind of feel like it's so obvious at this point, though, that it might be a red herring. But I'm not completely um, certain on that front. Right. Uh, but I, I do. I, I, I want to believe him, but yeah, at the same time, it's kind of, uh, it's very suspicious. <laughs> yeah. So you can see where I'm coming from, but we'll have to see what how that pans out. But it was a good episode. I liked it in general. I liked it. he actually had a challenge this time. You know, because the, yeah. the, the past ones, yeah, they've been cool, but this one was actually challenging. You know, he actually, I mean, it was another one of these things. Besides, like running up a building, you know, and he got 
or running down the building, you've got to be running the same speed. If you slow down, then he's going to smash and die, right? Exactly. And that is something about the science of this week's episode that really didn't make much sense was that earlier in the episode, he hit him. Uh, he had this, his childhood bully and then broke all these uh, bones. And then they were going to do a sonic boom and he's going to do the very same thing, doing it very hard. And how was Barry not going to break everything all over again? They didn't explain to me how he was going to you know, be 100% hitting this guy even harder than he did before and then suffering such catastrophic injuries. So that kind of didn't make a lot of sense. No, fair enough. I can see that. So, I mean, I was just, I was just more or less excited that he was doing something cool. <laughs> like, you know, just running that fast and just kind of pretty much headbutting him in the stomach. Yeah, that was pretty neat. I do think that making this week's villain someone personal to Barry as opposed to just this outsider metahuman was a good touch. I wish that we would have seen... I, I never felt like Barry really got even with the guy. He revealed himself, which might come back to bite uh, Barry later. But th- this, he didn't really get his comeuppance the way that I was hoping he was, because they showed him to be a really big jerk. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fair enough. But uh, but now he's in that in that special jail they have, right? So. Yes. So we'll, I don't think he's going to be going anywhere for a while. So I don't think they might bring him back in. But at this point, I think the, the character is over and done with for now. Yeah, definitely. I think they're saving them all up to get them all in there, and then someone's going to be making a jailbreak, probably during a power outage or something. Yeah, I can exactly. Definitely see them bringing everyone back. Well, one of the convenient times, right? So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, well, yeah, both episodes were were. Uh, I mean, the Flash and Arrow were uh, good this week. I mean, like I said, Arrow's trying to starting to pick it up a little bit, which is good because Middle is getting getting kind of bored. And I'm glad they're uh, doing a little bit more. But I, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're almost at the end of the flashbacks. So, and with Flash, it's still it's still picking up some good ground. So let's see what happens next week and see if they develop any more on who this mystery character is that uh, threatened to kill kill Iris if Joe doesn't back off. So, looking forward to that. <clears throat> Me too. Okay, I'm just I'm just making sure you're still there <laughs> since we had a few <laughs> few issues earlier because there's that dead silence. Like, uh, you still there? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> so so uh, that's going to uh, do it for uh, Flash and Arrow. And uh, just a couple, uh, well, pretty much one main rock note. Uh, Foo Fighters are doing a, a huge tour. And tickets will go on sale to the public on Monday. They're on pre-sale right now. So if you're a Foo Fighters fan, uh, it's I would go out and get them. And get them as quick as possible. Because it's going to be an awesome concert. And it's for their new album, Sonic Highways. Which is available right now. So you, if you want to pick that up, it's well worthwhile. And uh, I don't think there's really anything else that I can think of or that really stands out. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think of anything else kind of interesting happened or it is actually worthwhile talking about. Uh, mm, no, not really. It's, I, I can't think of anything that uh, really stands out uh, that's at least worthwhile. At least that's interesting or kind of funny to me. Cause there hasn't been too too much, and like I said, I've been mainly focused on the Foo Fighter stuff because I can't. I've seen it some years ago, but I really want to see them again. And uh, so, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, that'll. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a lot of short, a short uh, rock notes, but that's gonna do it for that because there's not too much coming up, except at uh, 3 p.m. today I'll be interviewing Lord Numb, which I'm looking very forward to. So, Britt, let's get into your blogs. Okay, um, well, first of all, top four remaining movies of 2014 continues. Uh, the Imitation Game, starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Alan Turing, who played a very key role in uh, cracking the Nazis' Enigma Code and basically helping the Allies uh, have victory in World War II. This is a biopic. It also stars Keira Knightley and Charles Dance, who played Tywin uh, Lannister on Game of Thrones. Very excited to see this. Uh, it is directed by... By, uh, the same uh, maybe Swedish who did uh, this movie called Headhunters, which is available on Netflix. It's a amazing uh, thriller, so definitely check that out. It is worth. I don't know. Some people may have problems with subtitles, but I and because there's so much action, I do wish you could maybe hear it a little, you know, hear an audio track version of it. But right. it, I would highly recommend that movie. Have you seen it? I have not. No. Okay, it, I don't want to give too much away, but it is a very good movie. They're planning an American remake, uh, and I don't know where that's at right now, but I'm very excited to see this uh, movie. I think it's going to be really good, and it's garnering a lot of early awards buzz. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta, 
I got so much I got to do my legs. <laughs> um, and then uh, Box Catcher starring Steve Carell. I think I might have talked about this a little bit on another podcast, but basically Steve Carell plays John DuPont, who uh, basically um, is a true crime story. That's what I can tell you. And it's uh, the wrestling brothers, Mark and David Schultz. He was there. Uh, a sponsor in the USA Wrestling. They were Olympic wrestlers, and things take a very uh, lethal turn. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Carell is getting a lot of buzz for this performance. People are saying that he is a lock for the Supporting Actor Academy Award. Uh, Steve Carell hasn't made a decent movie since staying in real life, so I think it's just <laughs> a triumph for him to be a part of a decent film. <laughs> well, what about Four Year Old Virgin? <laughs> <sighs> that was good. Was that before or after Dan in Real Life? Oh, I you know I think it might have been before. Okay, well he did he did do that one and he did do Dan in Real Life and then after that he made uh, Date Night the which is horrible and then Crazy Stupid Love which is uh, probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Period. <laughs> 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 but obviously the worst, the worst of the worst is the worst. Dinner for Schmucks. Yeah, I. That man owes me. <laughs> I, I I actually never saw Dare for Schmucks, and I just, I just still kind of want to though. Oh my! I mean, if you want to waste two hours, I mean, it felt like three hours, honestly. But <laughs> <laughs> it's really disappointing because you had all this like, talent. I thought, oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. It was not. Um, <laughs> but uh, also, uh, we have Wild. Uh, which it starts with Reese Witherspoon as a woman who goes on a 1,100 mile uh, solo hike on the Pacific uh, e- in the Pacific East, and it's basically a story of self discovery. And through flashbacks, we learn what has kind of led her to take this uh, mission. I'm excited to see this. I am a big Reese Witherspoon fan, so <laughs> I, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think women love her, but men kind of like, eh, but, but don't, I don't know what happened to Reese Witherspoon. I don't know what turned people against her necessarily, but it oh, seems to I'm not against her. I just, I, you know, I'm just not going to go out of my way to watch every movie she's in. That's all. I'm like. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I mean, there's certainly actors I feel that way about, so I, I get it. I just, it seemed like she was really on this track to be America's sweetheart, and yeah. I think she was America's sweetheart, and then something happened that kind of took the bottom out from under that and i don't really know what what it was that cost her all that momentum you got me <laughs> maybe, maybe it was legally blonde i don't know that was the best movie ever yeah <laughs> of course it was of course i do love the movie she, uh, freeway with Kiefer sutherland have you seen that uh no i've not Okay, that is a really crazy movie, and she is amazing in the movie. And so is Kiefer Sutherland. He plays a very uh, interesting, uh, well, evil character. But I don't want to give too much away because it is an, it is a movie that you're like, wow, did not see that coming. But it's very crazy. <laughs> oh, right on. I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the on the list of uh, things to watch because I got, I got tons. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do want to say that last night I went to a screening of Horrible Bosses 2. Uh-huh. And, uh, wow, it was pretty horrible. Aw, damn it. <laughs> I was so disappointed because I loved the first movie. Yeah. And this was horrible. Really, eh? Was it Jennifer Aniston? Did she ruin it? <laughs> no. <laughs> she was one of, she was the best part. She wasn't really in it that, that much, but she, she did get some very funny stuff it was just chris pine quite frankly uh probably best known for his role as the faux captain kirk in uh, star trek i won't acknowledge him <laughs> the real captain kirk <laughs> <laughs> he's in it way too much he basically soaks up all the time and okay let me ask you a question sure when you saw the first horrible bosses did you think the three guys sudeikis bateman and charlie day did they strike you as Average intelligence, below average intelligence, or above average? I'd just say average. That would be me too. I'd say these are just average guys. Here, they make them out to be so stupid. I mean, it's amazing they could tie their shoes in the morning. <laughs> I, I think I think it was I think it was Sadak is, was the only one who kind of played a bit of a dumbass. I think it was him. <clears throat> yeah, here he gets here he's rubbed off on Charlie Day's character, and okay. they both of them are just so stupid. I, mean, I thought. I was, into a dumb and dumber screening by accident oh huh. well despite what we say i'm still going to see it on tuesday so oh, D- yay. Dumb, dumb and dumber that is 
Gotcha. And are, uh, okay, so you're going Tuesday, so we'll look forward to hearing what you think about 